Believe it or not, but I almost burned down this 1973 Dodge Dart Swinger completely on accident. Let me show you what went wrong, why it went wrong, and what I'm going to do to fix it. More importantly, how you can prevent this from happening to you and burning down your old Mopar. My name is Randy, and this is Blown Budget Garage. cheap parts. You know, will they work? Will they not work? I don't know. It gets exciting, you know? Let's find out. Unfortunately, that almost got me. What we're talking about today, everyone, is your voltage regulator. This thing right here will absolutely make or break, Kobe, your entire electrical system. It can literally burn your car down. Let me show you on the plug exactly what I'm talking about. You'll see firsthand why it's so important that you don't do like I did and just go ahead and start with a proper premium product and not some cheap part from AutoZone like what I did. So first, I went ahead and took the plug off my voltage regulator right there. And we're gonna take this one off so you can see. Now, one of the things that I did was I hooked up a, a ground wire from the back of my engine to the back side of my voltage regulator. I also ground down all the paint on the firewall to make sure it had a really good, strong ground on it. It's one of the most important things that you can do. More importantly, just start with a good part to begin with. I say it all the time, I try to keep things budget friendly I should have known better. There are times that you can skimp and there are times that you cannot. And honestly, I should have never skimped on this. When it happened, there was so much smoke coming out from that wire where that plug melted. Get out of there, come on. That uh, it really worried me. There we go. All right, and there you have it. One made in China piece of junk voltage regulator. Again, I want to show y'all. This is the wire that I made up and it goes to the back of the block. You'll see that is bare metal there, bare metal there. You have to do that whenever you're putting on a new voltage regulator. All right. And just as important, just like I said, on the back of your Mopar, the Mopar Performance Voltage Regulator, it's coating. You have to get that coating off. You have to. You have to get this down to metal, that way you get a good ground. So let's go ahead and pull out the drill and the wire wheel. We'll get this cleaned up. We'll get it mounted. Just like that, you should have nice, clean metal. All right, so let's talk about the difference in quality. Not only does the Mopar Performance Voltage Regulator feel heavier, it, it looks better, it doesn't seem to be as cheap as the other one. This is just a cheap $20 regulator that I got at AutoZone. All there is to it. That is what I paid, about 20 bucks for this. And it didn't last but a few hours of operation. It's junk. So, how do we know that it's the voltage regulator that caused that? Well, let's talk about that real quick. So first I thought, obviously maybe there was something wrong with the alternator. So when I called up Tall John to tell him about what I was seeing, he said, well, let's make sure the alternator hasn't failed. So I pulled off one of the field wires. Now, what does pulling one of the field wires off do? Well, if your alternator was still converting electricity, still producing electricity to go to your battery for storage, if you pull off a field wire and it's still doing that, it's, you're still getting power out of it, your alternator has failed, right? That's all there is to it. Something has gone wrong and it should not be doing that. The other thing is that your voltage regulator could fail. If your voltage regulator is failing, it's going to continue to ask for more and more power, essentially. In layman's terms, it's going to say, I need more power, I need more power, and you're going to have more and more amps coming off of that alternator feeding through that 10 gauge wire into your plug. Now your plug is just 
a male and a female prong that slide into each other, right? One accepts the other, all there is to it. What happened was that was the weakest point in that entire line, so that's where it gave out first. Just so happened that it's inside the plug, so the plug started to melt. When I drove the car up here, one of the things I said was, I don't know if it was the power steering fluid or if it was uh, the transmission fluid that I spilled a little bit, got on the headers, but I smell something. Well, what I was smelling was that plug melting. So what we did was we put the battery charger, um, the battery tester on the battery. We wanted to make sure that one, it was charging properly, right? So we hooked everything back up, started the car up, and even at an idle, it was showing it was overcharging. This was after we did our little quick ad hoc test. So we were confident that, that the alternator was good, but we knew that we were getting too much power. Again, it's gonna lead you right back to this guy. If you know the alternator is good, if you test the alternator, and the test comes back, you know, it's, it's good, nothing is going on, the next thing that you need to be looking at is this guy, plain and simple. I love cheap parts. There's nothing wrong with some cheap parts. I like the, I, I, I can't say it enough. I try to keep it budget friendly. This one almost cost me the whole project. So, firewall is nice and clean still. I'm gonna find another washer to go on the back side of that cable that I made, my ground strap. So we're gonna go from the ground strap to here, washer on the back side, connect it back to the car. All right, I got two washers. It would help, honestly, to have some star washers, uh, but I don't have any. So let's just go ahead and slam this back on, hope for the best. Let's test it. The last time, as soon as we started it up, if I felt that wire, it'd be hot. Right in here. And it's not hot at all. Previously, as soon as I started it up, I could feel it getting hot. It is not hot at all. Let's look inside and see what we're showing on our volt gauge. And there you have it. That's exactly what we should be seeing. That is perfect. I got one there and I got one there. So let's go touch that wire again. Nothing, not hot at all. The only heat that I'm feeling is coming off of the header. Excellent news. Well, there you have it, everyone. It is, it's sad that something, something like this a good $50 part. If you skimp on it, you could waste a couple years and thousands of dollars worth of your hard earned money, your entire project and just like that be gone. I hope this helps somebody. Again, there are times when I feel as if this is something that could maybe help somebody out. Luckily, I have people that I can turn to. So if you don't have anyone that you know, now you have me. I'm here to help in any way that I can. I could not be more happy that something that easy, relatively cheap fix, now has me back to where I don't have anything to worry about. I'm one step closer to having this car in paint, one step closer to driving it around and enjoying the fruits of my labor. If you're still watching, thank you so much. Please do me a favor. Hit that like button, even if I didn't help you. Maybe I can help somebody else. The more exposure that I can get, the better. I truly am here to entertain 
educate when I can, and be as helpful as possible. I hope everyone has a great week. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.